Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Russ. I'm Mark. And I'm Henry. And this is a Spirited Endeavor. Tonight is Whiskey Wednesday. And uh, if you guys remember, we have a bit of a thing going on. Yeah, we okay. really do. So uh, what we've done is basically each of us has poured a dram of whiskey first thing this morning, and it's been sitting out in the open all day, just airing out. And what we're going to do is pour a fresh dram and do a comparison between the two to see exactly what that air has done. Um, the logic behind that uh, is basically comes down to this one, and this is something we've discussed off camera. This is a Glenlivet. It's been around for a little over a year now. And the problem with this one is the cork dried out. This is why it's so important to tip your bottles every now and then and keep that cork wet. Uh, but as a result, the air has really gotten to that one, and the flavor has changed significantly. So I'm curious to see in this little experiment just how much of, of an impact being exposed to air for one day has had with these whiskeys. Now we've done this with, uh, you know, or we've let a, a dram sit out for, you know, 10 minutes or 30 minutes mm -hmm. and everything. And by doing that, you know, it appreciably changed the taste of that whiskey. Oh yeah. Yeah, in some cases it was, it was night and day different. Oh, certainly. Well, I know if you've got one that's especially hot, letting it air out for a minute really helps. Uh, but oddly, there have been experiments done on this where it's been determined that that doesn't affect the ABV, which is the interesting part. So there, there must be some other chemical um, processes taking place in that glass. I would the think so. The oxygen is getting in there and oxidizing things. Yeah, exactly. So, well, Henry? I went with a, a really strong, I went with the Ben Riop 10, mm -hmm. eight, 10 year, because it's heavily peated, I want something strong. And I figured I wanted to see how much it being exposed to the air during the day mm -hmm. would depreciate how just in your face that is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that sounds like a really I, good call on your part. I would say the wee beastie, but hmm. I don't have enough of that left because <laughs> it's such a kick in the face. You have to try it again and again just to be sure that what you're tasting was correct. Yeah. But I went with the Ben Riop because, I mean, this is I think this is a good choice just to let something that's that strong, that powerful, just get enough chance to breathe. Yeah. And see what happens. Now, what's the ABV on that one? 46. Okay, so that's pretty reasonable ABV then. Yeah. So I think I'm somewhere between you and Mark. So what I picked was the Kilhoman Seneg, and this one is also a 46. Uh, I actually thought this was oh, a little nice. bit higher, but I was thinking of a different one. Um, and I picked this one because it is <clears throat> peated. It is a young whiskey, which means it's got a lot of kick to it, despite that low ABV or relatively low ABV. Um, so again, like you, I'm curious with all that youth and that punch that you normally get, has that been tamed at all? Exactly. And then Mark here had yeah. to go and outdo Mark? all of us. Uh, yes, exactly. I went with the Highland Park Cast Strength. Now this is a 63.3% ABV, and I let Jesus. this sit out all yeah. I let this sit out all day, and I was expecting to just see an M80 in my glass, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really curious to see where you know something cast strength, you know something with a lot of ABV, a lot of flavor, yeah. you know how that's changing. It's my guess that nice. that's probably going to change the most out of out of the three. I would okay. think it'd be most noticeable. Yeah, I would agree with that. I bet your off your room there smells amazing, though. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it does. And I bet you at sixty three point three, you're probably not going to work tomorrow either. <laughs> well, luckily, I just have to stumble into the next room. Yeah, <laughs> there is something to be said for that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, I'm yeah, gonna go ahead a... and pour my fresh one here. All right, I and do uh, the same. figure out. Then... I guess the first question is, what's different on the nose? Especially with yours, Henry, as heavily peated as that is. Old dram. 
older dram. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got two different Glencairns. I've got uh, one that's got the etching in it and the other one that doesn't, just so I can kind of keep them straight. I'm I've, using the left and right method. Yeah, that works. I think Ron Schmidt uh, um, went ahead and set some out earlier as well. I think he was doing uh, Glenmorangy and Jura, if I remember correctly. Okay, now for <clears throat> me, the P is still very, oh, wow. very heavy. Mm -hmm. Still very heavy. However, the one thing that has dissipated is the vapors. Yeah. Mm. That has dissipated. Hmm. So, um, the Highland Park, the, ca the cast strength here, it reminds me of a, like a library mm -hmm. where you, you walk in and you get the, you know, the smell off the books and, uh, you know, kind of that rich, you know, pulpy smell to it. Yeah. Caramel, you know, um, you know, uh, vanilla for sure. But, uh, that's, that's what I'm catching off the new pour. Now, now on the uh, the earlier pour, actually I smell more alcohol in it. On the earlier pour. On the earlier pour. Interesting. I've, I've got more of that. I've got more vapors in that. You know, more alcohol, more uh, hmm. spice. Um, I'm not catching those caramel notes. That's interesting. How about you, Russ? What do you got? So. I'm getting the alcohol vapors on both of these because, again, this is a pretty young whiskey. The cask didn't have time to take a whole lot out of it. But the interesting thing is that it's like a little bit of the edginess has been sanded away or smoothed away on the one that sat most of the day. So that character is still there. That punchy aspect is still there. It's just been kind of smoothed over a little bit. Um, all the same flavors as far as I can tell. Uh, but yeah, definitely kind of ripped, rounded over, smoothed off a little bit. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> now, from my first tasting of the one that I had out all day, mm -hmm. it's still very, very spicy. Still very in your face. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say spice, um, when you say spicy, are you talking like barrel spice? Are you talking about alcohol bite, or what is it you're referring to? Uh, barrel, barrel spice, very vanilla y vanilla bomb. Gotcha. Kind okay. Of thing. Um, it was actually quite a pleasant mouth burn to it, and it just got right under the cheeks, just enough mm. to get the saliva glands going. Oh yeah, and going yeah. That's good. I want a bit more of that. Um, as far as taste wise, you know, um, it's the PD, it's the vanilla. I mean, it's not changed dramatically, mm -hmm. profile wise, taste wise, other than just those few simple things. Oh. What about you, Mark? That just burned my tongue off. <laughs> that is like, uh, that's like, you, you know, having a glass mm. full of hot sauce. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, um, first sip on yeah, that it's, one. It's spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And um, I'm not really picking up a lot of the vanilla notes in that. Um, a little caramel, you know, like a little caramel apple on the, on the back end on the exhale. But, um. Yeah, that's uh, that's just spicy, spicy. I taste the maltiness in that. And this that's is the one that you've had out all day. This is the one I've had out all day. Okay. I expected to mellow out, and it, if anything, it just seemed to ramp it up. So nice. maybe that is an M80 in a glass. <laughs> Russ. So the what I like about the Kilhome and Seneg specifically is. It, uh, it tastes like an Isla. You know, it's got that peaty, smoky nature to it. But it's got a little, because of its youth, you get some really bright notes. You get more of the fruit and floral notes than what you would with something that's been aged longer. Um, not okay. a whole lot in the way of barrel spice or anything of that nature, because, again, it didn't spend much time in a barrel. Um, 
again, I will say that all the flavors are present between the two, but they do seem to be just a little bit muted with the one that sat out all day. There isn't that, again, there aren't those sharp edges. There isn't that smack in the face with some of the flavors that I was getting before. It's not tremendous by any means, but it's, it's definitely a difference. Nice. Hmm. So what it seems, it seems like the core flavors, especially with something that's really <coughs> strong, like in your case, peated, Mark's case, really high ABV. Um, my case, very young whiskey. The primary features that you would normally get out of that are still there. You know, you don't oh, yeah. you don't lose that aspect of it. Um, some of the vapors maybe dissipate a little bit, and maybe it's a little easier on the nose. But the the change isn't dramatic from what I'm getting, what I'm gathering from you guys. Yeah, for sure. Well, now I just now I just tried the. Uh, the uh, the new pour on the Highland Park mm -hmm. and it's just as spicy yeah so um, but I'm getting uh, I'm getting more of that uh, that maltiness in it mm -hmm. uh, than I than I did off of the uh, the um, the one that sat that one had a little bit of maltiness but that one has a lot of maltiness yeah and I'm getting more fruit flavor on the, on the back end and that's so. Um, that's an interesting point. Remember back in the day when we used to have graphic equalizers in our cars for our car stereos? That was, that <laughs> yeah. was the big deal. Back in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. That was our version of an amplifier back then. Well, to me, it's like the fresh one is with all the settings right where you want them. But the one that was poured earlier, it's like you took all those little, I don't know, adjustments and kind of bumped them down a little bit. You still get the same sounds or the same flavors in this case. They're just, they don't have quite the same emphasis and kick that I'd get out of the fresh pour. Yeah, see, now, if, if I were to use that same analogy, um, it's like I, I turn the treble way up and the bass way down. Yep, no, that's and, a good way uh, And I'm that. throwing ACDC on the, on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Now, with that one... To your ACDC reference, that's Iron Maiden in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, it's sitting out all day and taking the fresh pour out of it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is spicy. Yeah. Woo. So, based on your observations... How concerned are you that you may have a bottle sitting on the shelf that's got this much air in it? Doesn't concern me at all. That's kind no, of where I, I'm I going. Don't, I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think that would concern me at all either. I think as long as you maintain the cork, and this is a conversation we've had before, you know, again, with, with whiskey specifically, you don't want to pour you don't want to leave them on their side because you're going to dissolve the cork over time the alcohol is actually going to eat away at it but if you let it sit like this eventually the cork is going to dry out so every now and then for maintenance you got to go through do this and then put it back um, clearly I didn't do that with a Glenlivet and as a result it's had a year worth of change and that's been pretty significant <clears throat> but see to your point mm -hmm. Has it been helpful to Glenlivet to have all that much oxygen going into it day in, day out, all the time? In my case, I believe so. Um, for me, Glenlivet was one that I always drank on the rocks or was something else. I never drank it neat because I never particularly cared for it neat. Um, there really wasn't much wow. complexity. I didn't get, yeah, the vanilla was there and some of the other stuff that you look for, but it just wasn't forward enough to be interesting. At this okay. point, a lot of the yeah. sharp edges that you would find in a Glenlivet and a lot of the stuff that distracts you is gone. And now, basically, you're left with nothing but that vanilla and uh, caramel and those flavors. And it's to me, it's very similar to a Glenmorangie now. Um, maybe a little oh, bit more, wow. a little bit more interesting, and maybe a little bit more complexity. Which I mean, it doesn't take much. Glenmo isn't exactly complex, but it's tasty. This is in that same category now. I like it. Yeah, it's interesting. Excellent. <clears throat> I like it. Now, uh, not long ago, I did a, uh, a, a pairing 
where <laughs> I used um, chocolate covered sea salted dates, mm -hmm. um, and I paired that with the um, oh, uh, the Talisker Storm. Yeah, yeah. So tonight I thought I'd do an interesting pairing because I was thinking about the Highland Park and some of the notes in it and everything. Mm -hmm. And the the one thing I came up with was was this salmon. It is a, <laughs> it is a strawberry. Um, uh, uh, um, cheesecake cookie. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to try this along with the uh, the Highland Park. Now this is either going to be the greatest pairing ever, or I'm going to be throwing up in the uh, in the wastebasket over here. You saw it here, folks. Yeah. I'm going All for right, the so... throwing up part, man. <laughs> I'm <laughs> hoping for it, but I got nine one one on speed dial for you. Oh God! <laughs> cookies and milk. So Screw that. We right got now. cookies and scotch. So oh God! Mark's gonna vapor lock over there on cookie and scotch. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Man down! Man down! <laughs> Worst thing ever. No oh, God. <laughs> Worst thing ever. Dude. Really? Worst thing ever. Oh my God. Was that worse than the La, the Lafroy <laughs> old fashioned? Yeah, I'm sorry, brother. I, I I gotta say it was at least on a par with that. Oh god! Holy shit! Oh my god, dude! I think it actually like, melted the melted the strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> I have a lingering burnt plastic. Oh, God. Oh, dude, dude. oh my God. So the throwing up is not <laughs> happening right now. It's going to be like five minutes from now. Oh, my God. So Water. Water. Drink <laughs> water. You got water available, oh. sir? Mark, just to, just I to clarify. Not. I do not. Oh, my God. Bend down. <laughs> just to clarify, you don't recommend this. I, yes, uh, let's be clear about this. <laughs> Do not try this at home. Okay. I just want to make sure that oh we weren't being God. vague or anything of that nature. Like, yep. Well, yep. not honestly, um, but I do have to say, I've been watching my F-bomb, but why the fuck did you try that? <laughs> that I just thought it would be a great pairing. All right, Emma. so, if we ever start yeah, doing whiskey pairings. I about putting these on my charcuterie board, and, you know, in my next, uh, oh, okay, next gathering. Okay. Okay, that make that makes sense then. Okay, yeah, so yeah, little, uh, I little guess quartered cookies, you know, a little toothpick in them, you can dip in your scotch. We've learned a few things ah. here. Um, we've learned that when it comes to whiskey pairings, do not, for the love of God, listen to us. Um, <laughs> we struck out when it came to Lafroy Gold Fashion. In grand fashion, did we strike out? And this one appears to have been a strikeout as well. <laughs> so one out of three went yeah, well. This is a this is an example of what not to do. There you go. You're going to be tasting that for a while, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Sadly. going to be on me, and that's going to be bad. Sadly. Mm -hmm. Make sure you brush your teeth tonight, sir. Because <laughs> you're going to fucking need it. I, I'm kind of wishing I set off that A80 in my mouth. <laughs> that might have been more pleasant. Yeah, it might have tasted wow. better. So I'm okay. curious, um, we've got a couple of folks watching tonight. We've got David Stubbs. Thanks for joining us, David. Uh, Carrie Schmidt's Thank watching you, us. Uh, Ron Schmidt is also watching us. I'm wondering how he's doing with Thank his. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate you. Because he set some out. I'm kind of curious how that's uh, worked out. Tom Nall is watching us, and Mark Grill is watching us as well. So, uh, oh, yeah, Brian hey, Monaco. Tom. Hey, Brian, thanks for joining us, bud. Yeah. Mark, you okay over there? See everyone here. I did it again. Oh no, you didn't. <laughs> Why did you do it again? <laughs> it was a Why? perfectly good cookie. It's a perfectly good cookie, by itself. Henry, what are you it was doing? Probably with milk, it would be fine. <laughs> yeah, that is not. I had milk. to block the camera because I didn't want to watch any of that shit going down. <laughs> yeah, probably a good <laughs> I idea. I didn't want to watch it happen. <laughs> That's like that yeah, kid yeah, that, that touches the done. stove, doesn't believe he just got burned, so he touches it again. Yep, that Pretty would much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's kind of what happened here. Yeah. Your sister says why one in every family. Ah. Mark, actually, no. Mark, why do you do this to yourself? Not because I can't do it to somebody you? else. So, I gotta yeah, say. it probably be against the Geneva Convention, I'm sure of it. 
going back and forth between these, giving it a little bit of time, I really like the fresh pour much better. I especially especially without the cookie. Yeah, yeah, I do not have the cookie. I'm, maybe something in a peanut butter next time. Mm. But, um... Jesus. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the, um, yeah, the fresh pour in the Highland Park was certainly the way to go. I might let it sit out for five to ten minutes. Mm-hmm. But I think that I think that's I, I think I much prefer that one. Yeah, I mean there is a difference. Hey, ben oh, here we go. Now, hey, I'm, now I'm getting comments. So uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Ron says correct. He poured a third glass of the naked grouse. So apparently the naked grouse is going nice. well for Ron. So uh, good call All on that right. one. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Well, Ron, since you're Ron, tell us what you think of the early pour versus the current one or the fresh pour. I'm curious to see if that how that affected those other two because the Glenmo is a little. Like I said, it, there isn't quite as much complexity with that, so I'm curious to see what that does. Because if you kill off any vapors out of Glen Morangy, I mean, that's got to be like a dessert. No, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's going to be it's going to be like drinking cough syrup or something. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't. I was sick last week. I I drank orange cough syrup and it was delicious. So Ron, oh, I know orange is the best. I think it was oh. orange. I prefer I orange over the grape. I prefer yeah. orange over the grape. Yeah, better, better mouth feel. You know, better, better I, palate. I, I, I don't know. It was silky. It was smooth. It went down nicely. My throat felt <laughs> good. <laughs> this is what we've come to, folks. So Ron says he. This is what we do, guys. Come on. Yeah. This is this true. is why you're tuning in. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh God, help. Um. <laughs> so, Ron says all of his were better fresh. Um, tastes like flat soda, which I think that's actually a really good way of describing it. Describing yeah. it, you still get some of the same flavors. You're just kind of missing some of that, that extra zip. I exactly. You know, the one thing I do realize though is I'm less concerned about a bottle like this. It's got a bit of air in it. You know, that's that's something that's been stated time and time again. You know, don't let them sit with a little bit of alcohol. There's too much air. It's going to cause problems with the right. whiskey. And based You're on to have six to eight months on the bottle, right? But that's I that's it. As long as the cork is good, I'm not worried about that. I think that's conspiracy theory spread by big whiskey. Yeah, there you go. It's the big whiskey, more whiskey. Yeah, it's the man just trying to make us spend more money on whiskey. Shit, where's my tinfoil hat? <laughs> I'll, be right back, guys. I'll Photoshop that on later. Sorry oh, to get please political, do, folks. Please yeah. do. That'd be <laughs> <hilarious>. The big whiskey. <laughs> but, I mean, it's that has been a serious concern for me because, I mean, Mark, you run into the same problem. We've both got a pretty significant collection. We've got multiple bottles open. And, I mean, we're not plowing through these anytime soon. So they're sitting there with a bunch of air. And I was, I mean, honestly, I was a little concerned. And based on right. what well, we've I mean, seen here... Well, we've been trying to we've been trying to revisit a lot of these things mm -hmm. too, just because you know we have the bottle open, because we you know it's it's time to you know compare and contrast that in, in various mm -hmm. ways. Sure. So um, um, now I'm a little less concerned about that. You know, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, the maintenance and everything to keep the corks moist, mm -hmm. but um, I'm a little less concerned about that sitting in a bottle for you know six months or you know a year. Absolutely, I agree wholeheartedly, and that. You know, that goes well, back to what we were talking about before as far as me personally, I prefer the synthetic corks over the natural cork. Mm -hmm. um, I get it. There's some history with natural cork, and maybe there's a, an advantage as far as pricing is concerned. I don't really know. But the synthetic corks, I don't worry about as much as I do with the natural cork because those are the ones that have caused me problems in the past. Yeah, my guess is it's more ste steeped in tradition rather than function. Yeah. Henry? Exactly. Henry. Yeah. It, it's tradition, it, you know. Um, I don't have anything to say against imitation corp or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. Um, I think the one benefit to real corp 
is actually allowing oxygen to get into the beverage. I think that's the only advantage to it. But it's at such a small rate. Mm, I don't know, man. I mean, this this sucker is crusty. Yeah, it really is. I mean, that's yeah, just from... Like it's it's, huge. it's yeah. actually coming apart. Uh, okay. Well... But I mean, this you know, is an extreme case. But you this... didn't take care of it either. So there's that. But how many people do? I mean, that's kind hey, of my point. You're a cork abuser. You're a cork neglector. Yes. You're a cork neglector, sir. I have a new We're nickname. We're bringing you up on charges of neglecting corks. But I mean, no. realistically no, but speaking, saying, how many people I'm know saying, that? You know. Um, Not many. I mean, I, I certainly haven't. I, I certainly didn't pull this together until we've, you know, until we went down this journey. Yeah. You know, and as as we've learned more, you know, we're learning things, you know, just things like this, you know, with the maintenance of the whiskey yeah. that we didn't know before. And I'm not gonna lie. Before I go to bed every night, I take my bottles of scotch, fucking tip them up, get that cork wet, keep them. Yeah, wet. That, that's called alcoholism, Henry. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not tipping up, drinking them just to get the cork wet. <laughs> Which sounds oddly weirdly sexual, but not meaning to. Well, speaking um, of which, uh, Brian, up, just keep it wet. Brian Monaco Sorry, just Brian, Brian Monaco just commented a crusty cork still gets the job done. So I mean, since we're talking sexual innuendos, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> holy Jesus, guys! Just remember, remember to keep your corks moist. <laughs> But hey. no, since you mentioned that to me, you know, uh, my ex-wife, she drank a lot of wine, and it was like, always make sure the bottles are tipped on their sides, so yep. corks get, cork stays moist, and stuff like that, and this doesn't dry out, and that doesn't dry out, and apparently her attitude dried out, and there was that whole thing entirely, but um, I didn't realize, you know, I mean, even from a scotch, and most people you see... It's always staying up on a shelf. Yeah. You never think to go by and check it once or twice, make the cork moist, and put it back up on the shelf again. Okay, so... You don't. couple comments as far as that's concerned. Number one, that this is probably the most times we've used the term moist in one show, and my wife is going absolutely nuts over here. So thank you for that. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Job well done, yes. guys. Yes. Um, but... <laughs> Back on topic. <laughs> yeah, we just lost everybody at that point. Love you, Joey. Yeah, she's in tears. Um, I don't know where the hell I was going with that. Uh, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> you lost me a voice. Yeah. I don't either, but she's in tears. But she's weird. You bring up a good point. Voice. Yeah, some people are like that, Joe. Um, <laughs> but wine, you're yeah, right, though. I mean, wine bottles you're supposed to store on their side because the wine keeps the cork moist and keeps it from decon rotting, basically. With whiskey right. of any sort, whether it's bourbon, scotch, you know, any of them, rye, um, if you store it on its side, it's going to eat the cork. But, yeah, you just, you've got to tip All them right. every now and then. Yeah, Exactly. So uh, yeah, fun yeah, fun stuff, man. Tonight, absolutely. No, wow, it's, it's, and it's been a fun Joey night. Too. I so know this is this is a win-win. Yeah, I never even knew what's gonna happen. That's right. This is a win-win-win. Yeah. Well, I will say it's been educational for me. I've learned some things, and I'm a little less concerned about what's in my bottles over here. Um, so that's definitely absolutely. you should be. That's a plus. Um, now we yeah, were talking. Very concerned about eating cookies with uh, with scotch. So yeah, that won't happen again. Well, specifically well, with that kind of cookie that you're drinking might be yeah, a bad yeah. thing. I, I'm telling you what, maybe something in a peanut butter. I, I'm, you know, that's that's common. I don't think I, I've done that. I'm now, not so sure on that one. Chocolate goes well um, with scotch. Chocolate does go well with scotch. I don't know about peanut chocolate butter though. Chocolate does. Peanut butter does not. Actually, I bet there's. Who knows? An ex- I know. It, it might. It might happen. I bet, I bet Jura is the and exception, I'm though. I'm going to let you know from personal experience, cheese does not go well with scotch either. I don't know. 
It, it could uh, happen. Oh, I think oh, it no, could. It could happen. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, don't do it. I, I think I, I think I'm on a thing here, and uh, we're gonna try. Oh, we're gonna God. try pairings. Oh yep. man, we might have we're to try make a, unusual pairings. We might have to make a whole oh, series well, just about fun. that. I will. I will have. Uh, I will have emergency services ready to stomach pump. You mm. should. You should. Yep. Eating charcoal beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Preemptive charcoal. That could help. That could only help. So next week for Whiskey Wednesday, I think we're going to do a comparison. Uh, we talked about this earlier between tumblers versus tulip-shaped glasses like a Glen Cairn or something like that. Absolutely. Um, something like this, basically. There we go. Yep. There um, you go. As far as what the difference is in flavors, smell so on and so forth and you know is it worth picking up something that's tulip shaped for drinking whiskey neat um so that'll be another experiment that we'll encourage folks to join in on uh look forward to getting people's opinion as far as Absolutely. what they observed um ron i hope you'll give us some info a little bit more information as far as your experience with tonight's experiment and completely, then again completely we'll uh, I hope he does we'll hit this again next week and then the week after that we were talking about doing something on perhaps some local distilleries. Yes. Yeah, we're really excited I about that. I hope we can one. make it happen. So, uh, It'd look. be fucking fanta be fantastic. <laughs> there was no F-bomb dropped right there at all. No, it I didn't hear a fantastic. thing. No, we, we didn't hear a fucking thing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> the, the sheep are out. That's right. I'm going to, you know what, I, there's a way for me to do that. I just have to figure out how to proactively sheep you before you, you actually utter the words. There has to be a tell, <laughs> like a, a little twitch or something that I can spot. Yep, and you can sheep. No, I have no twitch. You do have to understand, I'm a truck driver. Like, every other word out of my mouth is probably going to be fuck at some point in time. So I'm going to sheep every so other word out of your mouth then. You, you could probably do that. It'll Hi, be the man, most intelligent name, conversation I've ever Henry. Had. Yeah, it would probably be the most intelligent conversation I've ever had. I don't know. All right, we may try that. On that note, before this uh, goes any <laughs> further, this devolves further. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, have a good evening. I hope you enjoyed this. I All know right, we Jess. certainly did, and uh, we will catch you guys later. Thank you. All right. All right. Good night, everyone. Be good. Night, guys. <laughs>